Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the Salesforce Winter 24 release notes. I have the slide deck that just came out pulled up here. We're gonna be looking at the Salesforce overall updates. So these are just general important updates from Salesforce that they've blocked together. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. I put out new Salesforce content each week. And let's go ahead and jump into this thing. Now the link for this slide deck is in the description of this video on the slide three. You can click through and look at some of the other content if you would like. But looking at the first slide here, dynamic forms is now generally available. So this delivers a top voted idea on idea exchange. So the need was a tailored record page layout with the ability to conditionally show fields based on a record data, user detail and form factor. So this is a no code implementation as allows customers to retire custom components that have been built due to page layout functionality gaps. So as you can see on the right, we have a screenshot of what that looks like. So dynamic forms are now available on the standard objects, desktop and mobile, and they can be enabled by selecting a record detail component from within the lightning app builder and, and upgrading via the button in the property panel. Dynamic forms on mobile must be enabled via the mobile app settings section of the setup menu. This is great that this is generally available and it is highly useful. All right, looking at the next update we have is quick action support on related list is now generally available. So admins currently have no way to add custom quick actions to the related list and need to add actions on the highlight panel, which impacts user experience. So the solution is you can now use custom quick actions on the related list and they will be able to configure custom quick actions both on page layout editor and dynamic related list in app builder. You can see a screenshot on the right here that they have provided for us of what that looks like. And this is great, this is generally available too. This is a great update that we will be using often. Uh, the next update we have here is dashboard owner. This is in beta, so flexibility to manage dashboards. So the ability to change the owner of a dashboard to anyone in your org or anyone who rolls up to you in your team's role hierarchy. So from setup on the reports and dashboard setting page, I'll select allow users to change dashboard owner in lightning experience only. Then from the dashboard tab or the open dashboard, select change owner. This is a great update if your org does not use a running user for dashboards. That way, if someone's gonna be out, they can change the ownership of the dashboard or whatever your use case may be, this could be highly useful. And then taking a look at the next update we have here, Visualize summary formulas for lightnings. So this is pretty cool right here. So the ability to see where a formula is being applied in lightning experience, similar to the classic UI before. You can look on the right side here of the edit summary level formula column and what it looks like. So create a report with the groupings you wanna compare. In the summary formula builder, select the parent group or parent group function or previous group function in the display area, set how to apply the formula using the preview image as reference. In the function panel, select the group parameter values to include in the formula. When you insert the function into the formula, the selected parameters are included. The next update we have here is JWT support with custom claims. The customer need is some customers integrate with Google Cloud and Microsoft endpoints, which make use of JWT. So the solution is to create an external credential with the JWT protocol and use it with your callouts. So the use cases integrate with endpoints that require JWT based authentication and with the custom claims to enable user content for integration. They've also provided a screenshot on the right here. I personally have never used this before, but it does seem like this will improve the end process for um, connecting to JWT and for Google Cloud and Microsoft endpoints. So I think this is a great update that is coming out. Next up, we have client credentials, authenticator integration, new option for name credentials. So the client credential variant of authenticator is needed for integrations that identify the Salesforce platform specifically as a client to the external system. So the solution is create an external credential with the authenticator protocol and select one of the options for client credentials as the authentication flow type. So the use case is this form of authentication is required by many systems, NetSuite, Microsoft, Google Cloud, and more. Now you can avoid custom code to solve for this. Yeah, it, this is a great solution if you're needing this. It's a lot less effort and it's better for security integrations. So good update that they're rolling out for us. And that was the last general Salesforce update that they prepared a slide for. Looks like we have some great updates coming out for Salesforce. 
like I said before, the link for this is in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video.